What makes a good trademark? What makes these brands so good? Well, it's a little bit like asking, how long is a piece of string? And it can be difficult coming up with a trademark that's acceptable not only in a marketing sense, but in a legal sense too. And here, a basic knowledge of how the law treats different types of trademark will help your mark obtain registration with a minimum of fuss and help you stand out from the crowd. We've discovered a number of basic rules that you can follow to get the most out of your registered trademark. The courts have set out various categories of trademarks. These can be viewed in a sliding scale from poor to best. The worst kind of trademarks are generic or descriptive marks. Examples of generic marks include aspirin and superglue, whilst descriptive marks merely describe the goods or services they relate to, such as World Book and Financial Review. Next category of trademarks are suggestive marks, which suggest a particular quality about their goods or services, like 7-Eleven or Word Perfect. The first principle is that if you are able to be original with your trademark, you're going to get a lot more legal rights. Fanciful trademarks apply ordinary words or images to products or services not normally associated with those images. Think Apple for computers, Penguin for books. Finally, the trademarks arguably afforded the best monopoly at law are inventive marks, or those that are completely made up. Kodak, Reebok, Esso and Google, all 100% original inventive marks. Beyond those four categories, which have increasing levels of protection for a trademark, give you more monopoly, there are also some additional rules that you should follow. They're not necessarily absolute rules, but they're giving you good guidance so as to maximise your monopoly. These rules of thumb include, typically stay away from surnames as they are difficult to register, as are geographical names, and these are often rejected. Also, slogans are difficult to register, and really long names should be avoided as they limit your monopoly, as does the inclusion of the and a and other immaterial matter. As in many other areas, rules are there to be broken, so it's not as if in every case all of these rules will apply, but the purpose of the guidance that you've heard is to indicate that there are many rules that you should consider following because if you in fact breach all of them you certainly are not going to have a mark that's easily registered whereas if you try and follow lots of them in some instances you'll get a magnificent result with a trademark registration. <laughs>